brothers and sisters, um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior have been strengthened you according to his will and his purpose. Um, I pray that you know that our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus is faithful. Um, most importantly, I have a word for you today, brothers and sisters. And um, I pray that it will increase our faith. Um, I, I pray that it will give us a greater revelation of who God is. And I pray also that it will cause us to walk more faithful with who God is. That we may see his glory. Brothers and sisters, before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that the Lord had to pour into us today, okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Wise Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us of our sins. We come up for your throne. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your relentless pursuit of our heart that we may know you and have fellowship with you, Lord. Lord, take us deeper today. Lord, give us an understanding, Lord, of your grace today, Lord. Reveal to us your heart today and everything that is dear to you. Lord, help us to be more like you. Help us to be transformed more by the power of your righteousness and the knowing of who your son Jesus is, Lord. Lord God, we love you. We pray that you will have your way. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word, okay? Now, as I've been spending time with the Lord, the Lord has been speaking to me concerning his heart. Okay? And the greatest revelation you can ever get in this life is to understand and grow in the understanding of who God is by by cherishing the moments he give you to have fellowship with his heart the greatest thing you can ever do is to know who God is through a personal relationship brothers and sisters because having a relationship with God and knowing who God is it will separate you from being religious and having a relationship Knowing who God is is what separates you from being religious and having a relationship. Because, brother and sister, in this hour, religious won't cut it. Religious won't call you to endure. Only your relationship with God will call you to do to endure. Because only your relationship give you the intimacy that God requires for you to get an understanding of who He is through His Son Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And the Lord says, speak this to my children. The title of this message is Grace Revealed. Heavenly Manifestation. The title of this message is Grace Revealed. Heavenly Manifestation. Listen, brother and sister. The most greatest revelation, the most greatest manifestation that we'll see in this life, the most greatest miracle we will ever see brothers and sisters is the manifestation of what God do through his sacrifice God can raise people from the dead physically he can heal wounds he can heal sickness but the greatest healing he gave us when he freed us from the enslavement of sin and the greatest miracle that heaven manifested was God's grace in Jesus the greatest revelation that God manifests manifested what his grace through his son Jesus. Yeah. Now, in order for us to not take advantage of that grace or to be empowered by that grace, we must got to understand what God grace is and who God grace is. Because scripture tells us that grace came through Jesus Christ. Oh. So, grace is who God is. Mm -mm -mm. And because grace is who God is That means God grace is also holy God grace is also uh, righteous God grace is also just God grace is also revealed in such a way That it we eventually judge those who did not obey that grace okay? God is grace That's why through God grace he sent his son Jesus that every man do, that do not obey that grace will be judged by that same grace because he rejected the grace that will save your soul. Oh, man. Okay. Now, the other side of God's grace is 
God, grace is the manifestation of the kingdom of God. God, grace is the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Okay? And without God, grace, there's no repentance. And, what, and, what, and without Christ Jesus, who is the grace of God, there is no opportunity to repent. So, God grace that came through his sacrifice gives us the opportunity to repent of our sin. So God grace who is Christ, we need to thank him for his grace because without Jesus, there is no opportunity to repent. Oh. So what does that say about repentance? Repentance itself is grace. Repentance itself is grace because God does not have to give us the opportunity of the chance to repent. God can just judge this world and still be a good God, still be a righteous God because he is perfect and never did nothing wrong. Because there is no sin in God, there is no evil in God, God is absolutely true and absolutely good because the truth that comes from God is good and everything that is good that is true because God good is not defined by how this earth say what good is, but God good is defined by the truth that is who truth that is defined by the character of who he is. So repentance is a grace that God give. Oh man. Repentance is a grace that God give. So as we live in repentance, we live in the grace of God. As we live by repentance, we live by the grace of God because there is no repentance without grace and there is no grace without repentance because repentance is grace. Repentance is grace. Because God given us grace to repent and turn from our sin. So as we get an understanding of that repentance is a grace, then we get a greater manifestation of the kingdom of God and what God desires and longs for us to do in obedience toward him. God said, blessed are those that are poor in heart, pure in heart, for they shall see God. So as you live a life of repentance, through, as you live a life of repentance, you live a life through grace. And because you live in a life through grace, you live in a life crying out to God that you are grieved over the sin around you. You are grieved over the sin that manifests itself in your heart, manifests itself in, in, in your heart. And then God say to us, blessed are you children because you are poor in spirit. Why? Because you're not grieving just because your sin affects you, but you grieve more because it hurt my heart. Oh. And because you grieve because it hurt my heart, you are my child because you long to please me. Oh. And the only way, only way to please God is living a life of repentance through his grace. Oh. The only way to please God is to live a life of repentance through his grace. And the only way to live a life of repentance through his grace is by faith in Christ through the indwelling of his spirit that manifests the life of Christ in you that bring into remembrance the grace of God and the righteousness of God that in all things your relation in your relationship you may truly know and desire him. And only when you desire him will it keep you in this hour. If you don't have a true desire to fellowship with God, you will be swept away in this hour. In this hour leading up to his second coming, if you don't have a true desire, if we, I, me, you, anyone that is listening, if we don't have a genuine desire to fellowship with God, then we will be led astray from God in this hour because if there, Jesus said, there's no gray area. There is no in between. You either with me or against me. Whoever well, we gather with me, scatter. So if you are truly in love with God and walking through the love and God, walking in the love of God and believe in the love of God and how much he loves you, then there is no gray area in your heart. You either going to desire him or you're not. Because the only other option when you don't desire here is you desire in this world. So if in this hour, God is putting a fork in the world. It's a fork in the world. You're either going to desire me or desire this world. But if you truly are consumed by my grace, then you're going to desire me because my grace gives you the appetite to live for me. If you are truly consumed by my grace, then you're going to have the appetite to please me because my grace gives you the desires that come from heaven.
Without my grace, there is, without the grace that is in Christ, there is no desire for us to please God. But through his grace, we have all desire to please God because the Holy Spirit gives us all the things that brings us to, brings us into common ground with God through his son Jesus that makes all things in agreement and reconciled to the Father. Apart from God, there is no commonality in man with God. But when we are baptized in the spirit of God by faith in Christ, now we take on his righteousness. Now we have things in common with God through the appetite of the birth that he has given us in his spirit by his grace. So what is the revelation of grace? That God grace is righteous. God grace is holy. And God grace should not be taken advantage of to lead to unrighteousness, but rather God grace is given as an instrument that leads to obedience through life that is manifested in his son, that in all things we will know the grace of heaven. Heaven is a gracious kingdom. <laughs> the kingdom of God is a gracious family. And because the kingdom of God is a gracious family, that means everybody in that family live according to the standard of God. Because the standard of God is grace, but the standard of God is also righteous. The standard of God is not corrupt, so therefore his grace is not corrupt. Because the kingdom of God is a gracious family, that means everything that come in contact with grace, that truly live by grace, will live in truth and not unrighteousness. Because the grace of God is an instrument from the kingdom of God that was created by the Father in heaven. That everything that have been settled in heaven before the foundation of the uh, world, before Adam first was created, grace was settled in the kingdom of God. That grace would be the manifestation of the uh, from the author of life. Who is Christ Jesus that created all things through the power of the Father for he is deity, he is God and because Christ is God his grace is so divine that it permeate per and perfect everything that come in contact with his grace that in all things they be made gracious, true children of God that the grace will manifest heaven in their heart. Oh man. So what do we say? That the grace that come from God is a heavenly manifestation of righteousness. Oh, man. That the grace that come from God is a heavenly manifestation of righteousness. That in all things our love will make our that in all things God love will make us right with Him in peace. But the same love that make us right in that peace with Him will make us right in that peace with one another because His grace is filling our heart for His will and His perfect. For the sanctifying power of eternal life through the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? The next thing the Lord took me to, he said, Christ's grace, his power, you know what see? have been revealed in this last time for us. That brothers and sisters, we are in time, in the end time, in that seven year period, leading up to his second coming. And in this hour, God is manifest, manifesting his true grace. That we may truly know him and turn away from the false grace that false prophets and false leaders have been teaching from a place of personal gain. That for so and so years, for, for years behind us, many false leaders and false pastors, and especially in this hour when false prophets will, will arise, they will teach, teach a misconception about God's grace instead of the true manifestation of what God's grace is. In this hour, there will be many false prophets that teach a misconception about God's grace. As so as it were before these false prophets that will rise up, many have taught a misconception about God's grace instead of the heavenly manifestation of God's grace. Okay. The misconception of God's grace that man teach, that false prophet teaches that we can take God's grace and do whatever we want and there's no consequences behind it. But the true manifestation of God's grace is God love us and he is with us. He'll never leave nor forsake us. But we can choose in our own rebellious to turn to rebellion to turn away from that grace. And now we're no longer covered by that grace because we chose to reject the perfect grace of God. Oh. And that grace is Christ Jesus. Oh Lord and Savior. So in the new heaven and in in, 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 in at the judgment when God judged this world, the white throne judgment in the book of Revelation 20 and 12. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in the spirit and showed me the white throne judgment just like, just like John seen in Revelation 20. 
And as he take me in the spirit, I see the walk right throne judgment. I see his sheep on the right side and his goats on the left side. And I see everybody in the world that and Jesus is judging everybody in the world that just like he said in Revelation 20. And when I come out of the vision, God said, go to Revelation 20. When I go to Revelation 20, it said a book was open and then he judged the small dead and he, the small the, he, in Revelation 20, 12 said the book was open and the small dead and great was standing before the throne of God. So in this vision, God was showing me the white throne judgment in the spirit, the same way he showed it to John, the apostle over 2000 years ago. And as he showed and as he showed it to him, as he was showing it to me in vision, I see everybody in the world there. Okay? Now, why is that important? Because at the throne, Jesus had the Lamb Book of Life open. And that's in this vision, as he had the Lamb Book of Life open, I see him, Jesus standing there judging everybody in the world. Okay? Now, the Lamb Book of Life, there will be books in heaven. There will be the books of every record of everything that we have did. And there will be the Lamb Book of Life. So on one hand, he got the book that he recorded everything you did. And then in the kingdom of God, he got the main book, which is the, the, the Lamb Book of Life. So when he opened that book, he's going to look into the Lamb Book of Life. Is your name written? Okay. And if your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, then that means he's going to take your book of records and judge you according to what's, what's in your book instead of what Christ did in his. So whenever your name is not written, written in the Lamb Book of Life, God's going to say, listen, and I'm telling you, I seen Jesus in the spirit and there was so much power coming from his glory strong. And he was standing up judging everybody in the world there. And, and if your name is not written in the Lamb Book of Life, he's going to flip. Oh, I don't see your name there. Okay. Then he's going to pull your book and lay it right in front of you. Lord, lay it right in front of you. And judge you according to every sin that you have did throughout your whole life. And you will be condemned. But if you if you did obey the gospel, you did have faith in Christ Jesus, you did love his grace and you live by his grace, then guess what? When he opened up that Lamb Book of Life, he's going to see your name and he's going to like, look, I know he got all of this in this book of everything he did, but did he believe in my son? Because when your name is in the Lamb Book of Life, it's saying that, man, you believe in what he did, you are in his grace. Because the Lamb Book of Life is consistent with the mercy and the grace of God. The Lamb Book of Life is consistent with the mercy and grace of God. So when he look into the Lamb Book of Life and he see your name, then he gonna say, okay, though he did all of these things, he's in my Lamb Book of Life. Put, put that away. He is covered. He is free to go. Though he got a book of everything he did, but he's a cover upon my magnificent grace. The grace of God is the heavenly manifestation of everything, of everyone who will be written in the testimony of Jesus that was, that was saved through the sacrifice of his blood. The Lamb Book of Life is the Lamb Book of Life is 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 is, is the Lamb Book of Life, brothers and sisters. Is a manifestation of the is a is a consistent manifestation of the mercy and grace that God had revealed through the sacrifice of Jesus that we will not receive his punishment because the manifestation of heaven have been revealed through Jesus and by faith in him when he opened that book he see that we was in his grace when he opened up that book he will see that we was in his grace and when he see that we was in his grace. He said they, they are blameless. They are righteous. Because the grace of God is righteous. And that grace is Christ Jesus. Our Lord and Savior. Seated right hand of the Father in heaven. Bless your name King Jesus. Okay. And the next thing the Lord spoke to me. He said. Serve by the strength that God supplies. Okay. In this hour brothers and sisters. It is very serious that you serve by the strength that God supplies. In this hour, it is very serious that you serve. In this hour, in this hour, we must serve by the strength that God supplies. In this hour, if you serve, if you serve by your own strength, you will fail and be consumed by this world in the one world government. And not only that, you will be consumed every day of your life if you serve in your strength. Jesus said to me, he said, son, in this hour, serve by the strength that I supply through my spirit. Oh. He said, son, in this hour, serve by the strength that I supply by my spirit because that will be the only strength that calls you to endure. He said, son, if you don't serve by the strength that I supply, then your strength will fail you because that will be the only strength that die. Oh. 
but my strength that is eternal will supply every need that you that you just it will supply every need because my strength will give you the desires of my father in heaven that you may persevere in my love and not your own because my love never fails and if you per per persevere through my love then the grace that come through my love will pick you up when you fall and cause you to run to more obedience because I will reveal to you where you went wrong and where you fall short and guess what the next time you're tempted you will overcome that hurdle because I carried you through my grace and my glory that bring about power and righteousness and truth and help you turn from every sexual and more indeed every immorality that this world will throw out in this hour because the grace that came through my sacrifice loved you beyond you would love you beyond the way that you would love yourself oh man and in that way the heavenly manifestation of my grace have restrained you from all evil because my grace the grace my grace is revealed in my name but my grace is implemented by my spirit you didn't even let me see. that my Jesus our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus sit on the right hand of the Father in heaven said the grace came through me says Christ Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father in heaven he said the grace came through me by my name and my spirit is the one that implement my grace in your heart. Grace come by who I am. And the spirit calls it to be implemented in your heart. Perfected in every way that is right according to the standard of heaven. Oh, man. And then the Lord took me to Isaiah chapter 51 through 4. So what do we say, church? Let us serve by the strength that God supplies. Okay. Isaiah chapter 50 verses 1 through 4. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 1 through 4. This is what it said. The Lord declares this. Where is the certificate of divorce by which I have sent your mother away, O Israel? Or to which one of my creditors did I sell you as slaves? In fact, you were sold for your wickedness, your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing. And for your transgression, your mother was sent away. Why, when I came, was there no man to greet? You know what the cry of the Lord in this hour? He says, son, I have given such a great grace to my people. Where's the cry of repentance in this hour? You didn't even listen. Where's the sigh of mourning over the sin and the corruption that is going on around us? Where's the cry of mourning of you love me because I love you first? When I brought these things to you, where was you greeting me at? From a place of humility at my feet saying, Father, I need you. Permeate my heart. Forgive me of my sins. He said, where... He said, why when I came where there was no grief? Why when I'm spoken to you, America, spoken to these things, showing you got judgment on the land, America, why have there been no answer? Church, why have there been no answer? But hear the words of the Lord. He said, you obedient churches, baby. Thank you for crying out. Thank you for seeking my face. Continue to seek my face. Continue to be faithful and don't stray away. And they will know that I have loved you. But those churches that are in, are in, that are in rebellion, he said, "Why, why have you have not greeted me? When I called, why was there no one to answer?" So you know what the Lord is saying in our, I got a great cry in this uh, a great cry in this earth, but ain't no one answering the cry of my call. Ain't no one answering the cry of my call. Who will be that faithful and wise servant? Respond to my spirit that calling men into repentance in this hour that they may be received up when I come because I'm looking for a people of faith and I'm coming back for a bride of faith and I will receive you up into my glory. Says the Lord Christ Jesus, I will save you. He said, is my hand really so short that it cannot redeem my service? Or have, or have I no power to rescue? Listen carefully. With my rebuke, I dry up the sea. I make the rivers into a desert. That fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. I clothe the heaven with blackness of storm clouds and make and I make sackcloth of mourning their clothing. The Lord said, I can turn the heavens black and their clothes be a mourning. And I can turn the heavens black and make it sackcloth and the clothing of mourning. Oh. And the Lord, the Lord God has given me his servant, the tongue of a disciple, as one who is taught. That I may know how to sustain the weary with a sword. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple, as one who is taught. Who are the true disciples of Christ in this hour? 
the ones who are trained to listen, the ones that know how to sustain the, the weary with a sword. In this hour, the Lord said, I'm calling this world to repentance. And I'm, su I'm sustaining everyone that is called by my name by the sword of my mouth. The Lord Jesus said, I'm calling everything to repentance. And the only thing that will sustain you in this hour is the sword of my mouth. Because as my judgment go forward, it will be a sword that lead many to repentance, but also bring many into the righteousness of my grace. <laughs> the Lord said, who are those faithful disciples that carries my holy word like a sword and know how to will it to bring the worry to humility and ease their heart from the burdens of this world by giving them the true revelation of my sacrifice that they may live and not die. Oh, man. Isaiah 59 Isaiah 59 6 through 9 Isaiah 59 6 through 9 This is what it says Their wealth will not serve as clothing Nor will they, they cover themselves With what they make Their works are works of wickedness Of sin, of injustice, of wrongdoing And the act of violence is in their hands America The act of violence is in your hand World the act of violence is in your hand. It was prophesied that in this hour, it will be as the times of Noah. So we are in the times of Noah, in the end time leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus. So men will get more wicked, the time will get worse, but church, we should get more obedient. As this world get wicked, more wicked church, we should get, get more obedient through God's grace because God's grace is the obedient manifestation of heaven <laughs> that calls all men to righteousness. God grace called man to obey righteousness who is Christ. Christ is the righteous vessel of the Father. And God said, what is the will of the Father? It's to believe in the one to, he sent. So God grace is a call to righteousness, not disobedience and rebellion. Oh. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? That though this world is getting more wicked, church, we should get more obedient. Because the wickedness of sins is in the hands of the mans of this world. The wickedness of sins are in the hands of America church. We must rise up and be a light to retrieve many as we can in this harvest before he come. Okay. Verse 7. Their feet run to evil and they rush to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of wickedness, of sin, of injustice, of wrongdoing. Devastation and destruction are in their highways. They do, they do not know the way of peace and there is no justice in their track. In this hour, brothers and sisters, the world, the one world government system through the spirit of the Antichrist will issue a false peace and many will be deceived by that false peace and they won't know the true peace in the way of God. But also, on in a daily basis, church, we must know the peace and way of God. But many church, many of us, not all because there are obedient church, but many of us are living in a way that we don't know the peace of God because the peace of God is the way of righteousness. The peace of God is the way of righteousness, and that way is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. For he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So the way of Christ is peace through righteousness. But the deeds of sin and evil is the way of corruption through false peace and misconception of God's grace through rebellion and insensitivity of his spirit that in all things we will live and reject the way of God because we desire the darkness of this life. But those who walk in the true way of peace that come from God long for the things of God that are true. <laughs> Jesus, man. Okay. Isaiah chapter 4 to 16. It says, I'm going to start at verse 9. It said, For I am, the Lord Jesus said, who see the right hand of the Father in heaven, said, For I am God, and there is no one else. I am God, and there is no one like me, declaring the end and the result from the beginning. And from the ancient times, the things which have, have not yet been done, saying my purpose will be established, and I will do all that pleases me and fulfill my purpose. Church, in this hour leading up to the second coming, brothers and sisters, it's not time to be building an empire. It's time to be building up, ready to go home, my brothers and sisters, okay? Brothers and sisters, God declares the end from the beginning. We just walking in the heavenly manifestation of the fulfillment of God's word leading up to the second coming. But God and his sovereign will have seen everything to the finish, have seen everyone who is going to be worshiping before his throne forever. 
So what do we say? The heavenly manifestation of God's grace is a calling to worship before his throne forever through the kingdom that he prepared for us since the foundation of this world. And the present suffering that we're going through now or what we will face church during the great tribulation and, and that is a few years away. That is a few years away. It's nothing compared to the glory that we will be in with him. Okay? Why? Because God said, I declare the end and the result from the beginning. And from the ancient of time, the things which have not yet been done. In this seven year period, we're going to see everything that have not physically be manifested before our eye will come to pass just like God said it. And it will cause us to appreciate the manifestation of his grace much more. It will cause us to appreciate the manifestation of his grace much more that we will choose to follow it and live in heaven than the corrupt things that we're going to see in this life because we're going to believe in his promise that came by his grace. And that promise is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we may dwell with the promise that brings about eternal life in our souls forever through the new body, that, through the kingdom that he had prepared for us, that in all things we'll be, we may be a holy vessel forever. Okay? Okay. Isaiah 45, 19 to 19 through 20. It says, I have not spoken in secret in a corner of a land of darkness. I did not say to the descendants of Jacob, seek me in vain with no benefit for yourselves. I, the Lord, speak righteousness, the true trustworthy, a straightforward correlation between the deeds and words. Declaration, declaring these things that are upright. Assemble yourselves and come together. You, uh, you survivors of the nation. They are arrogant. America, you, oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, a nation. They are ignorant, okay? Who carry around their wooden idols. America, in many ways, we have been ignorant toward God. Using using our economy and great wealth to lead to unrighteousness and turning those things in idol and rebelling against God. And that is why judgment is on the land. And he is not pulling judgment from um, from this land until repentance. By the fact, God is, God's hand will not be pulled back off of this whole world, including America. Until the righteousness prevail. That has already prevailed and be, will be revealed at the second coming of Christ Jesus. Our Lord and Savior. Okay. He said, Assemble yourselves and come together, you survivors of the nation. They are ignorant who carried around their wooden idols in religious procession or into battle and keep on praying to God that cannot save them. Church, let us not turn our works into an idol where we think that our work will save us instead of the grace of God will save us. Church, in this hour, let us not be deceived by our works and blindly turn our works into an idol, thinking that our own works will bring us salvation rather than the grace of God through his work, through his righteousness, that have saved us through his sacrifice. Because only those that have a true revelation of his grace will walk in righteousness and holiness. But those that have a misconception of his grace through their personal works and their love for personal gain will be deceived because they did not know God through his grace and what his grace really is. And his grace is an instrument of righteousness through repentance, through the revival of soul that reconciled man to truth in him. Oh, man. Keep moving forward. Isaiah 45, 25. It said, in the Lord, all the offspring, it said, in the Lord, all the offspring of Israel will be justified, declared, free, of guilt and will and will glory in God, brothers and sisters. The heavenly manifest the hell the, the result of the hell he, excuse me the result of the heavenly manifestation of God's grace is that we will be justified, free of guilt, and will glory in Him. Not only as we walk righteously in this life, but in eternal life forever with Him, we will be justified and glorified, free of guilt. Through the grace and the manifestation of God. And that God is Christ Jesus, our Lord, and we're the same. Okay? Let's move forward. Okay? Isaiah 43, 12 through 15. It said, I have declared the future and saved the nation and proclaimed that I am God, and there was no strange alien God among you. Therefore, you are my witness among the pagans, class of the Lord, that I am God. Even from eternity, I am He. And there is no one who can rescue from my hand. 
I act and who can revoke or reverse it? Babylon to be destroyed. This is what the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel says. For your sake I have sent one to Babylon, and I will bring down all of them as fugitives. Even the Chaldeans who reign in Babylon and to the ships over which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the cradle of Israel, your king. In this hour, the Lord will bring down every Babylon type spirit in the heart of man. In this hour, God will bring down every Babylon type spirit in the heart of man, and every man that lived that way will be judged at the second coming. That is a few years away at the end of the second camp, seven, seven, seven period when he blow his trumpet, the seventh trumpet. Okay? 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 Uh, Isaiah 42, 23 to 25. And it says, who among you will listen to this? Who will listen and pay attention in the time to come? Brothers and sisters, we are in the end time. Jesus' second coming is a few years away. Who among you will listen to this? Who will listen and pay attention in the time to come? Okay. Who gave up Jacob, the kingdom of Judah, for spoil and the kingdom of Israel to the plunderers? Was it not the Lord? He is against whom we of Judah have sinned. God is against all those who walk upright Excuse me, excuse me. God is against all those who walk in their pride and love the indulgence of sin. But God is for those who walk in uprightness through the righteousness of his son Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. Let's read. It says, And in whose ways they of Israel were unwilling to walk. Therefore, let us not be unwilling to walk in the ways of God because they bring about judgment. But let us be willing to walk in the grace of God that it will bring about peace forevermore. That keeps us when we face an desire and fear because his love fills the voice in our heart that causes a thing by the brokenness of our sin. Okay? Last but not least. And whose law of teaching they did not obey? Because they did not obey the will of God, God judged them because they did not walk according to the law of his teachings. What is the law of the New Testament? It's to obey the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that the righteousness of God that will fulfill in Him will be manifested in our heart, that we may live right by God and turn away from every idol by having faith in Him and putting Him on the throne of our heart, that we will only live to glorify His name. Jesus. Name. Verse 25 Therefore, He poured out on Israel the heat of His anger and the fierceness of battle and, and engulfed Him in fire. Yet he did not recognize the lesson of repentance which the Syrian conquerors would intend to teach. It burned him, but he did not take it to heart. Brothers and sisters, church in this hour, let some of us not be cast away because we did not take God's teaching of judgment in this hour series. God is shaking this earth, judging this world, showing them that his second coming is a few years away. Church, let us not, let us not take this lightly. Okay? Let us take this serious. Excuse me. Yeah, let us not take this lightly. But take this serious that we will learn what he's trying to teach us in this hour that one we will be received up when he comes two we have strength to endure through the great tribulation everything that we're about to face because persecution is coming towards the church that's why they're banning a lot of things through big texts and all around the world right now because they're trying to they're trying to make the church compromise and water down the gospel to the point where they're no longer true believer but false believer but the truth the true believer will be persecuted okay so therefore let us walk in the way of God. Let us walk in the true of God. That God's grace may give us strength to endure. Because his grace is power that causes us to live in righteousness. Brothers and sisters, that is all I have for you today. I pray that this word was a blessing to you. And I pray, I pray that it caused you to live and to live in righteousness and cause you to follow Jesus with everything in us. So everything in, that is in him that is manifested in us that we may live truly for him. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only Son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ. As my Lord, my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' person, I we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you accept the Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And what should our mindset be? That we should rather have nothing in this life and be with Jesus than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus. Because true success is not having an abundance of things in this life, but true success is being retrieved by the one who will receive you into life when he comes. Okay? Because we can have all of these things, but when Jesus come, we don't go with him, then we was a failure because we did not fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart and truth in the spirit. But we can have none of these things. And when he come, we go with him, then we was a smashing success because we will fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart and truth in the spirit through the testimony of his son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Brothers and sisters, church of us remember, it's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. America. 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 It's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God grace, a God hand and judgment is stretched out on you, America. God hand is stretched out on this world. He's not pulling it back to his second coming. Before, let us repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Brothers and sisters, see you next time. Remember, Christ Jesus love you. Love you. Love you so much. Even, even to the death on the cross. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Goodbye. Remember, Jesus loves us so, so much.